Good morning, all of you, my friends and colleagues at ICAP Worldwide. I am here today on a slightly cold and frosty morning in London. Um, as you know, this time of year, I send a message to the firm worldwide. And this year, the message is obviously a particularly poignant one because soon we are coming genuinely to an end of an era, a great era. While I talk about the end of this era, I thought the nice thing to do would be to go back to where it all started. 30 years ago, on the 1st of May, 1986, in this building, on the first floor, somewhere up there, four people, myself including, um, started a, a, a brokerage firm called Intercapital. Indeed, one of those colleagues is still with the firm today. Ian Rick works with us in Hong Kong. Ian, happy Christmas, happy New Year to you. And we started up here, 1st of May, 1986, 23 other broking firms in London. We started off specializing in US dollar interest rate swaps. Most of our competitors didn't think we had any chance of survival. And we opened for business with that great excitement and thrill all those many years ago. From this building here, I walked into the front door every day early in the morning as I was working as a broker on the desk. From the beginning, notwithstanding our modest size, Intercapital set out to be different. We were innovators. We created ideas, we were embracing change. We sought to be more professional, more knowledgeable and more ethical than our competitors. And we attempted to build from the earliest days a corporate culture. And we were ambitious and we were also lucky. The late 80s and early 90s were a boom time for financial derivatives in London. In 87, we had the Big Bang, the City of London blossomed tremendously, huge influx of international firms. Intercapital grew rapidly. We set up an interest rate option desk in the late, uh, late 80s, followed by the first in, uh, commodity derivative desk in 1990, which was a great development. We set up an emerging market trading desk shortly after that. It was a period of immense excitement change, and I think we were one of the first properly multicultural firms in the city of London. By the mid-1990s, Intercapital had already established itself as clearly the leading derivative broker in London, in the city of London. We had a couple of hundred staff, the firm was very profitable, we were in a good place. But the industrial landscape was changing, and it was changing fast. The impact of globalization, the banks were becoming much more international. Technology, very expensive, very scalable, and of course, the potential impact of Euro, which at that stage we didn't know how big it is or what it would mean. All of these issues, incredibly important issues, represented a threat, but as well an opportunity. And we decided to view it as an opportunity. And although the broking industry at that phase was still very fragmented, we believed, little into capital, that there was a chance to build a world-leading broking firm. And with that in mind, we merged with Exco, big established big British broking firm, listed in London, became a public company. Intercapital was a public company, me as CEO, for the first time. But that wasn't enough. Although Exco gave us a small presence in America and a big presence in Asia, we needed something bigger. And in 1999, we did the merger with Garban, creating Garban Intercapital with a big presence in North America. And within two short years, a little Intercapital in London, had become Garban Intercapital, without doubt, the biggest global broking firm. 4,000 staff, 60 offices around the world, undisputed global leader. So in 2004, we'd outgrown Finsbury Circus, so we made that short journey around the corner from Finsbury Circus to our new headquarters here in Broadgate, in the middle of the city of London, which has obviously been our home for very successful home for the past 12 years. And our arrival here set off another phase of great growth and ambition and expansion. In 2002, we bought a very successful energy firm in Louisville, Kentucky, APB Energy. We also invested in Trioptima, the startup, which of course is now a star asset in our portfolio within the post-trade portfolio, a brilliant, brilliant business. In 2003, we bought Brokertech. 2006, we bought EBS, 2006, Intercapital ICAP, it had been rebranded ICAP by then, went into the FTSE 100 index. 20 years after it was founded, we were in the benchmark UK Stock Exchange Index, a, a, a moment of great, I think, achievement for all of us and a real 
a real privilege and an honour. But also 2007 brought the financial crash, which of course has impacted our industry dramatically. Not least of which we were fined as a result of LIBOR, as you all know, in 2013 by the UK and American regulatory authorities. A low point, a low point certainly in my career, and I know many of my colleagues as well, something from which we learned a lot. Although, of course, our three colleagues who were responsible for the fine were all ultimately acquitted in the High Court. The years uh, since the onset of the financial crisis have not been easy years, as we all know. They have been distinguished by a huge regulatory change, big reduction in bank risk trading, risk appetite, and a shrinkage in volumes. It has been a pretty tough period, as we all know. But notwithstanding those challenges, ICAP has continued to invest. We've continued to invest in our technology assets. Look what we've done in EBS. We've launched Direct, we've launched Select, very successful new projects. And in post-trade, we've continued to build out on Trioptima, and we've set up Euclid, our investment vehicle, and we've invested in Abide and Duco and many other projects. So we're continuing to put money into our business, foresightfully looking forward to the future, adapting to the change, investing and innovating. And once again, we are on the brink of transacting another industry-changing deal. On the 30th of December, as most of you I'm sure will know, we will complete the merger of ICAP's global voice-breaking business, 3,000 staff, with Talit Prebon, creating TPI Cap, a global leviathan in voice broking. More than 5,000 staff, more than 60 offices around the world, an incredible array of product and services, fantastic data resources, incredible systems and support, under the leadership of John Fizakli, a good friend of mine, the clear leader in that space, the right business, the right place, at the right time. You can imagine that this split of ICAP and the transfer of our global voice-breaking business to Talit Pribon Group to create TPI ICAP is a bittersweet moment for me. Whilst it is absolutely the right transaction to do for our staff, for our shareholders, for the business overall, nevertheless, I am losing, we are losing many, many great friends and great colleagues in this transaction. And I would like, if I may, to take this opportunity to say to all of you who are moving to TPI Cap, from me and my senior colleagues, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for being wonderful colleagues, loyal colleagues. It has been a privilege working with you this past many years. I am so proud of what we have achieved, but I know all of you will go on to achieve more. And for those of us who are part of the next group going forward, I, am, I cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to 2017. I believe we've got some exceptional assets, both in the electronic broking division, post-trade division, what Euclid is doing, what we're doing with our exchange, what we can do with our data assets. The next opportunity, we have a world-class business at an exceptionally appropriate time when a confluence of industry changes, I believe, is moving very much in our direction. So I will start the new year absolutely motivated to take next group on to great victories, great success, great, success, great innovation, with great opportunities and I look forward to you all of my next colleagues on taking our project forward to achieve that everything that we can achieve. Looking back a lot of people ask me what it is that has made ICAP the success story that it has been and I think it distills down to some core key issues. Firstly this firm is a great innovator, a great ideas factory and we have been able over the years to embrace change where some of our competitors have been more reluctant to do so. We've also developed, I think, a great corporate culture, something that all of us feel and makes a difference to the way we operate. We are also dedicated to professionalism and a high level of corporate ethics. Looking back also, I ask myself, what is our greatest achievement in the 30 years of ICAP? And what stands out to me, I feel most strongly about, and I, I guess maybe many of you do too, is our annual charity day which started in 1993, a very modest operation in those days, the firm was tiny. And we have continued, as you know, every year since then, 24 years in succession. Indeed, our last charity day was very recently and raised eight and a quarter million pounds, uh, over $10 million. And our charity day is something which I feel enormously proud about. I know so many of you, all of you do too as well. So here we are then, the end of a momentous year. And this is my last message as to you all as CEO of ICAP, a job which I will shortly be relinquishing. 
And I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you, every one of you, everywhere in the world, to say a heartfelt thanks again for the energy that you've given to the firm again, the patience you've also shown as we've got towards completion of this, uh, this big TPI cap project. And importantly, I want to take this opportunity to wish all of you a happy holiday, a happy break, um, a whatever you may be doing with your families, I wish you a wonderful, wonderful time. And come back in the new year invigorated and enthused because I believe the future for all of us is really a great and exciting one. Thank you.